challenging question, if uh, but want to hear everyone's thoughts on it. Uh, what what is your favorite proposal, and your least favorite proposal, and try to keep it to like fifteen seconds uh, about the whys, and then um, and I'll be a heavy facilitator on that because we don't have much time. And then we'll just pass it around. And if you can also just say I'm completely undecided and I don't know. Uh, so uh, I'm actually, well, yeah, we'll just pass it around. Wonka, do you want to start? What's your favorite proposal and your least favorite proposal? Why? And keep it all to 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, on the first spot, um, it's, it's tied uh, Ostrom's Baby and Goldilocks. I like both proposals. And uh, my least favorite proposal is uh, 420. And I'll pass to Libby. Hey, um, yeah, my my favorite proposal is mathematics because I think it's very well balanced and um, it's the one that made most sense for me so far. And my least favorite is 420 because I think it's silos. I think it, it's not so inclusive. And I'll pass to Jeff. Uh, Jeff, so I don't know if you've even, you can just say undecided, but the question is, uh, what is your favorite proposal? What is your least favorite proposal and why 30 seconds? Yes, I would say I'm undecided, um, but I'm happy to hear uh, the opinions and uh, favorites of everyone else here so I can uh, end this session with a better idea on which proposal I'm voting for. So I will pass to, uh, sorry, I came in a little bit late. Um, Nuggen, have you gone yet? No, I haven't. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, well, my favorite for now is uh, mathematics, but I, I also like Ostrom's Baby a lot. I think there are some similarities uh, and I, li I like it. And my least favorite, I think, would be for now, 420, I think it's a bit too extreme. This about, uh, yeah, the, the bonding of the a bit extreme. And I'll pass to uh, Marco. Thanks, Duncan. Um Can you guys hear me? Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm in the same position as Jeff, actually. I joined this call to actually get a little bit more clarity on all the proposals. I was on a vacation, so I'm kind of catching up. So my hopes is that you guys will be discussing something and I will get more insights. And by the end of this call, I will be able to uh, make a decision. So, so yeah, that's where I am. So I guess undecided and no favorite, no least favorite. Um, until next time, I guess. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I pass it over to... Uh, Griff, can you pass it over to someone, please? Yeah, let's throw it to let's throw it to Tam. What's your favorite, least favorite, uh, and uh, keep it to thirty seconds. Well, I'm just gonna pass quickly because I can't right now. Sorry, with something with the kids. I'll pass back to you, Griff. Okay. Uh, how about Maria? I'm undecided, but I'm ready to to keep learning about the params. I'll pass it to uh, Septi. Thank you, Maria. Yeah, my favorite is Ostrom Baby because it has like the highest success ratio and I think it brings so much inclusivity to the community and it's really aligned with our culture. And for the same reason, like my last favorite is 420, like the reserve ratio is so low. Uh, I'll pass it to Fowler. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I'm also undecided, just starting to dig into it and I love the process, to be honest. I haven't been involved directly, but followed it. And I love the process. And I, it's really insightful already. And I'm hoping to get an additional insights today. Looking forward to the discussion. I can, do you, I can pass it for you. I see Andreas is wearing this sweet hat. Uh, zero to hero. Uh, do you have any, are you still undecided? Or do you have any strong opinions about the proposals? Hey guys, uh, I'm undecided. I got uh, two PMs on the weekend to vote. So I'm here to listen and then I'm going to vote. Nice. And how about uh, Ann Brody? 
Uh, I assume you're also still undecided, uh, but that's maybe still not. learning, still soaking in the context. Nice. Uh, Livia, did you go? Yeah, I did. Ah, my bad. Uh, oh, Santi, uh, do you have a favorite param proposal or least favorite param proposal, or are you still undecided? Hey, no, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> nice. And I think that's everyone, correct? Okay, then let's get started. So the format for today is going to be uh, six minutes for each uh, each param debate, each parameter set. Uh, there are a few people who are in a call right now that will come for the end so they can present their parameter sets. But uh, we're going to put six minutes on the clock. Nugget will go first to do mathematics. After that, Wonka, you could do Ostrom's baby, I I'm hoping. And then uh, we'll sort it out from there. So yeah, uh, we'll have six minutes for, uh, for each parameter proposal lead to speak why it's the best proposal, and then six minutes of debate. So keep your questions answered. And I want to recommend uh, Nugin and Wonka, if you can, use the um, voters pamphlet as much as you can, and also uh, especially compare yourself against other proposals about what makes you different. OK, cool. Uh, so, Nugan, if you're ready to share a screen, you can take it away. Sure, thanks. I'll start. Can you see my screen? Good? Yeah, okay. Yes. Well, um, I'm presenting mathematics. Um, <clears throat> the idea was to have a proposal that is a bit middle of the road. I kind of took stuff from from the others and kind of mix them in a way that made sense for for me and trying to take a bit of the best of everywhere um yeah so i'll just go through the through the, through the stuff real quick uh, for the model module one um this proposal has a, to a total of two years vesting which is on the longer side but um it has a very long fall so the freeze if you, you can see it's actually on the shorter side in middle ground but in but it has a very long thaw i think um i think it is fair to expect of the hatchers to have a long commitment to this project and i but i also think that we should give people the chance to leave if they want to and kind of scale out in a way that doesn't hurt the the project through through strong selling pressure so that is my logic behind the behind the token free token. So I, I set the initial price at zero seventy. This is below the the hatch price. First of all, because after the after the minting, the actual impact hour minting, uh, we kind of diluted the the actual funds backing each TC token to around seventy four cents. So it's kind of closer to the real thing, and mainly because this allows uh, playing around with the bonding curve. Um, since we are going to be the make the initial buy-in, uh, the TC is going to be the first buyer in the in the bonding curve. By setting a, a lower uh, initial price, we can give the TC the chance to buy a lot of tokens for the for the funding operations and for the for protocol own liquidity. In our in 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 my case or in this case, uh, it will be it will give the TC around. Oh, it's the next slide. Oh, okay. Um, oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Let me just check in the check here. Initial buy. Yeah, it will be nearly two hundred fifty thousand TC tokens, which is the second highest number of all the of all the proposals. While it also allows us to have a very um, high commons tribute, which gives us more than a million dollars in the common pool for funding uh, projects in token engineering. So I think this is kind of a best of both worlds. Also, after the initial buy-in, the, the, the public price would be at 142, which um, is, a, is a fair profit for the, for the risk the hatches have been taking. And the, the end, this 
lower reserve ratio of 14.7 will also have the effect that that the price will be able to grow faster than than in other um, in other proposals, which will also I think give a, a certain protections against against whales just buying all the supply and getting all the voting power. I think uh, Juan made this great uh, graph here where he showed how much um, how much voting power would be in the in the hand of buyers and uh, of hatchers depending on the when, when buying a 50 million X die and in our case in, my, in this case 50 million X die would give more or less half of the voting power to the market which I think is is fair uh, it's, it, it also has a lower uh, tribute than the other proposals because I think it is um, to, in, to encourage people to yeah to, to buy I think if we if we if anybody starts researching this and and wants to join and sees he has to pay a 20% entry tax I think this will scare off a lot of people I think a low but fair end to end exit tax is is the way to go and a 7% tribute is significant on the long run and I think since ma most of the of the funding of the common pool will go through the tributes which will uh, were a function of the volume having more volume on the bonding curve will end up with more funds for public goods so I think that's a win win Minute twenty left. Okay, yeah. Well, on on DAO voting, it's on the it the, the DAO voting parameters are designed to be as stable as possible. It has a very high support required, uh, normal minimum quorum, and a vote of seven days with four days uh, voting period. I think, uh, yeah, the the DAO parameters as they are shouldn't be constantly changed, and there should be a high consensus if we if we want to change them. So. That is uh, the logic behind that. And for the conviction voting, the conviction voting is thought for uh, p passing proposals in around one week to two weeks, more or less. So the spending limit is high because I think uh, we should be able to fund big projects and I think it is easy to underestimate how much uh, it takes to, to just keep the lights running and, and funding stuff. And this uh, higher conviction growth is to, to have people really actively voting maybe one, two times a month and, or kind of dividing the tokens, but not having to stake the tokens for months just to get something passed. And um, yeah, that would be, I think, I'm more or less done. Yep, you only had one second left. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so perfect timing. And... Uh, if anyone would like to ask any questions, this is the moment. I got a question for you. Yeah. So it takes, uh, with your tau, tau voting parameters, you, your proposal has by far the longest um, uh, time to execute a vote in 11 days. Um, do you think that is too long of a time to execute a vote for TAL voting? Um, well, I think since uh, this is TAL voting is only going to be to kind of change the parameters of the DAO itself. Um, I think having, well, it's it's 11 days if there's a vote extension. If there isn't, it's eight days, which is like a week for the whole voting process and then just one day as uh, for the execution. I think giving the people the time to really think about it and, and vote, I think people have lives and have stuff to do. We have four days for the delegates and then the whole weekend for the people to review what the delegates voted and, and change that vote if they, if they feel so. I think most of the time it will be the delegates voting. So, yeah. So I think seven days plus one day execution is kind of reasonable and if there's extension i think uh, we should also give time people to that the information to come to them and then have time to think about it and choose choose something but it's it's a fair question um thanks uh, okay so on that uh the 91 percent is that too high? I mean, could you imagine? I've heard other people ask this question. I'm curious what your answer is. Someone getting, you know, nine percent of the token supply and just blocking the evolution of the DAO. 
Yeah, well, I think... Um, I think that uh, if there is a significant opposition, it is it signals that we should... Um, that the, the proposal could go to, back to the drawing board. I... I um, I expect most of the time to just the delegates to vote, so I to pass the threshold usually about blocking. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think somebody can just. I mean, somebody would have to invest significant amount of money and just have it there for for griefing. I'm I'm unsure if that is a uh, is a big attack attack vector. Or, or just you know, looking at the difference, uh, or, or if three percent more, or three percent less support required is going to really defend us against that kind of attack, especially with with um, bond anchors with a low reserve ratio, so the price doesn't, uh, so it it becomes less expensive to uh, accumulate a big amount of the of the of the supply. So it's 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 a risk, but I don't think this proposal is uh, especially vulnerable to that comparison to the others. I have another question, and it's regarding like this proposal is the one that has the most money in the common pool, and I wonder if we could like misuse some of the resources, like if we have too much money, like we don't use it properly. What do you think about that? Um, well, I mean, it's it's always a risk to to spend stuff, uh, to spend the money badly. I think um, you can't have you can't have or people just funding very big stuff which goes wrong but you can all have to also have this debt by, by a thousand cuts where people just kind of get small proposals passed quickly um i think we should be careful which how we with how we with how we with what we fund and we should really think about it but that's that's a cultural and governance problem because i think um we should be able to tackle big things big projects if we want to and i think again that just keeping the lights on and funding uh, operations is going to take some 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 funds, and and we and we should and we should be able to, to to fund that easily and not have to resort to really high convict high uh, high amount of vote stake or something just to pass the salaries of the people, for example. So yeah, there's a risk of of spending a lot of money on on bad projects but i trust the the tc to 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 vote wisely and if there is really something that goes against our values we have we have uh, the covenant and celeste any other questions for mathematics anything that you want to add nugget uh, no, no, but thanks, thanks for the questions. They were great. Okay, mathematics. Uh, well, I'll take this 30 seconds extra then to, um, to just show people how to vote. So there is, uh, there is a, actually, Nugget, maybe uh, you could, you could uh, since you're already sharing the screen, I don't know if you want to show them the snapshot page. Um. Well, do you have a link right now? I I don't think I have it. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. No, sure. Actually, I'll I'll uh, I'll steal the shared screen from you then. Okay. So, we are voting on snapshot, and it's a very novel vote. In fact, this is probably uh, well. I mean, other than the test that we've already done, no one's really used quadratic rank choice voting uh, before. Uh, so it's kind of a very novel approach. But basically, you get to rank in order your favorite proposals. And uh, you want to pick four proposals and rank them in order. Uh, if you pick less than four, that's also okay. But it means that if the winning proposal wasn't one of the ones you picked, your votes will not be counted, basically. And so it's a really cool voting strategy uh, where 100% of your votes go to the first uh, proposal that you pick. And then if uh, that proposal has the least number of first place votes, then all of your votes go to your second place proposal. And, uh, and you can see the current situation is that Goldilocks has the most votes, although not many people have voted, only 22 people have voted. Uh, but we have Goldilocks and Bolsheviks uh, Gambit is number two. So 
but you can rank them in order and you can uh, vote in that way with your TCH tokens. There are also two other votes that are worth mentioning that are a little bit more nuanced, uh, but I'm just going to take a moment to describe them here. There is this, what should the vest, when should the vesting period start? So we have this token freeze that's being described and the token thaw. But now we, we, kinda, there, we uh, see that there is a two-week deployment. So we never really stabilized exactly when the freeze would start along this two-week deployment. So basically, there is, does the token freeze start on January 13th? Does it start with when conviction voting opens? Does it start when the bonding curve opens? Or do you get just not care and you want the devs to pick a date? Uh, those are your four options because in the end, the devs have to pick a date. So, uh, but we wanted to make sure that you guys uh, have a chance to say. And uh, currently, it's when the ABC opens is the current date, which is the latest. So if, you're, if you like longer vesting, uh, you probably want to vote for this. If you like shorter vesting, you like to vote for that. If you want to do it when the token starts, you know, uh, you could do it when this conviction voting opens. And there's a lot more conversation about this in the forum post. There's another vote also, and all of these are ranked choice voting. This other vote is a little more nuanced, but uh, there's this, the, the fact of the matter is anyone with TECH tokens can rage quit from the DAO if they don't like the economics that were chosen. This is a truly decentralized process, but decentralized processes come with some ambiguity sometimes. So we don't know exactly how much money we're gonna have in the DAO or how many tokens will exist. So uh, there, uh, the actual bonding curve, because we don't have stability in the number of tokens and the amount of money that's in the curve, the actual deployment will never be, it, unless there's some perfection of the number of people who rage quit and our assumptions, uh, there, we will not be able to match the proposal that wins perfectly. So we'll have to make some concessions. So basically there's four options. Either we keep the reserve ratio constant, which is the shape of the curve, we keep the opening price constant, uh, and and that way the price will start out the same and the best that we can. And then we'll adjust the reserve ratio and the initial buy and commons tribute around that. Or we keep the initial buy and commons tribute constant so that the right amount, the, as close as we can, the amount, the ratio between the conviction voting pool and the bonding curves pool will be constant. Uh, and then we change the reserve ratio and opening price to mitigate the fa these, these adjustments. Or we vary all of the parameters and just try to keep to the spirit of the proposal the best that we can. So those are the four options there. This is the other vote. Uh, so, so yeah, we uh, please consider voting on these things. There are these three active votes. Of course, the runoff vote, the main runoff vote. Uh, please consider voting on all four. Although if you don't want to research those, you can also just delegate your decision to the community uh, who is paying more attention, which is totally fine uh, on the other two votes. But, you know, I think they're simple enough that with a quick read in five minutes, you could probably um, get an understanding. And if you feel comfortable voting in the comments upgrade, I would also con uh, advise you to also vote and, and say your piece on these other three votes. So yeah, that's the, this is the voting system. It's snapshot.org uh, slash pound sign or whatever slash t commons dot f and i'll put this in the parameters channel and with that i'll pass it to wonka oh thank you wonka you already put it in the parameters channel okay i'll right. jump off now guys thank you so much see you around thank you nogan uh wonka do you want to take it and show off ostrom's baby i'll put six minutes on the clock well um the proposal of ostrom's baby um, I think it's a proposal that um, aims to open um, the, the, the bonding curve, allowing people to participate in the governance too. And um, I've been running some tests on, on, on the proposals, and um, I want to show how, how this governance uh, works with Ostrom's baby. Uh, the Hatcher's tokens are 2 million of tokens and uh, with uh, Ostrom's baby, uh, with 50 million in entering the bonding curve, we, we would have um, 
um, three three million eight hundred um, new TC tokens minted. That means that with fifty million entering into the bonding curve, the hatchers will have thirty eight percent of the governance, and the market will have fifty five per percent of the governance. I think uh, it's it's good to allow um, newcomers to have governance, and um, also I think that uh, that. It, it's it's also uh, very important to have a, a, a high reserve ratio so that uh, we can uh, sustain um, our economy, even in the case that uh, Hatcher's tokens are sold. And I am I don't know if, if, if uh, it's because I am always thinking in conflict management, but I, I have been me measuring some risks um, in the proposals. And one thing that I like about this proposal is that if 50% of the uh, Hatcher's tokens are sold with 50 million wrap XDAI into the bonding curve, the price only drops from 33 to 18. So that means that uh, even though that we um, have a, a big piece um, and uh, we, we are important in the, in, in the governance, even in the worst case scenario that Hatcher's tokens are sold, the economy can co can continue. And um, yeah, I think this this is really fair because with 50 million in, they would have two thirds of the governance, and we would have one third of the governance. And um, and we we placed uh, 1.5 million in contrast to these 50 million in. So I think like Hatchers will still have a lot of governance, but we are allowing people to, to, to have governance um, um, with this configuration. This same test, uh, I, I run it with each of the proposals and after Ostrom's baby comes Goldilocks, giving the market 57% of, of governance with 50 million in. I think this is also good as long uh, along with uh, Bolsheviks and even uh, mathematics. But I, I want to raise uh, a flag around 420 proposal. And is that uh, as the reserve ratio is so low, um, minting tokens is extremely, extremely difficult. So you can see here that with 50 million entering into the bonding curve, the hatchers will still have 73% uh, of the governance and this is what scares me the most and if hatchers tokens are sold if 50 percent of the hatchers tokens are sold with 50 million wrap x die in the into the bonding curve the price of the token drops from 227 to 0 0.64 so i am very scared about this scenario but um i think we should build our economy um thinking that we can sustain even the worst and yeah we, we are saying like okay hatchers are not going to sell but uh, i think like with this volatility that 420 um gives um it would be first um interesting for hatchers to sell but also um, as the reserve ratio is so low, the, 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 the money from the bonding curve goes directly to the price of the token, but tokens are still the same, remain the same. So like the price goes up, but uh, we will have the tokens. So we have uh, uh, the capacity to make uh, the price of the token drop. In every of the other proposals, um, the, the economy can sustain this scenario. And uh, one minute yeah, left. It is very, very important to take into account. And um, yeah, one of the things that I like about also this proposal is that it starts with a low opening price and it, it allows us to buy a lot of TEC from the initial buy. Um, there's other thing that it's, I want to say. Slide 21 shows the initial buy and we couldn't find it before with Nugget, but. Yeah. Yeah, the, we have here 280k of, of, of TC tokens. 
and um, yeah, I, I like this proposal because it's it's the one that allows uh, more that the people that come after the, the the initialization of the bonding group can play a significant role in the organization, and not that um, we as hatchers govern the economy and and people that comes after will never be able to have as much governance um, as as we have. And yeah, I think that as we are a value aligned community um, and, and we've been talking about uh, not being a, a technocracy, I think that this vote, um, it's very important to not become a technocracy because if, if we don't let the people that comes after to have governance, we will eventually become a technocracy. Nice, nice. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, okay, let's start the clock on uh, Questions for Ostrom's baby. Anybody have any um, anything they want to know more? Uh, can you repeat your concerns around the like the flag you raised on the 420 proposal? Yeah, of course. The thing is that in 420, the reserve ratio is really low, and that means one that um, minting tokens will be uh, harder and uh, two that the price goes th that uh, the money entering into the bonding curve goes directly to the price and not to the reserve of of the price so that means that uh, the price of the token will go up but there will no there, there will not be more tokens there will be the same tokens that the hatchers have so it, that means that if the, the, a lot of money enters into the bonding curve, hatchers can uh, sell their tokens and actually um, take a lot, a lot of, of money from the economy. Uh, because the money that is entering the, uh, and raising the price, they are, they are um, selling it um, on the tokens that were already minted. And yeah, I don't know if I am explaining myself well, but um, if here in this in this scenario, if 50% of hatchers tokens are sold with 50 million wrap X die into the bonding curve, the hatchers that sold would have 41 million wrap X die. Yeah, there will be no uh, uh, minting tokens will be very difficult. Hatchers will have the tokens that they have from the initial distribution, and the price will go up. So if 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 hatchers sell um, um, they can easily drop the price of the token below one dollar, but in all the others, um, as the reserve ratio is a little bit higher, uh, um, yeah, um, the power of the hatchers um, becomes um, uh, more even with the power that the, that the market can have. Like here in this in this in this proposal in 420 to mint the same amount of tokens that hatchers have, that is 2 million, it's almost impossible. So it's impossible to have the same governance that hatchers have. And I think that will, be, that will, that will end up being a technocracy. So, so I think that we need to allow newcomers to co-govern with us. And Ostrom's Baby is the, is the proposal that has that the most uh, because to 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 mint the same amount of tokens that hatchers have, um, the 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 market will have to 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 uh, enter into the bonding curves seven million five hundred, and in the other proposals like um, in twenty million there is uh, when when the when the bonding curve gets twenty million we will have like. Um, yeah, tw uh, uh, twice, like the same amount of governance that hatchers that hatchers have, but minted, and and in Bolsheviks also twenty million, and in mathematics in fifth in in fifty million. But here in four twenty, it's impossible to mint all the tokens given to hatchers. Any other questions for uh, Wonka? Yeah. yeah, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, there's I have two. Two, Great. two or three questions, actually. Uh, but I'll, I'll do one, one first. Um, so I guess, is there any concern that you have, or do you think there's any likelihood that 
there could be a um, one or a group of people who buy equal amount of tokens to the hatchers and sort of take over the two ETH. Do you think that's the scenario with this one proposal? And then for the simulations, I think it's really amazing that you took the time to do those. And the 50 million buy-in and 50 and hatchers selling 50% is one scenario. Are there any other scenarios that we were able to look at? And is there any difference between hatcher selling on the secondary market versus primary market in these simulations? Um, well, the level of complexity was not so deep because this is not like my, my area of expertise, but um, I have learned by, by, by practicing and with all these um, um, parameter parties. And then I was throwing just numbers uh, into the dashboard and this is what I saw. And since I saw this, I have, I have been like, oh my God, oh my God. I need, uh, I don't, I don't want to panic, but like, yeah, I don't want, I don't want us to, to become that what um, we initially um, said that we didn't want it to be like, yeah, we didn't want it to be, to be a technocracy and we want to be a collaborative economics. And like um, with this proposal of 420, um, we will eventually become a technocracy because uh, the market will never have as much uh, governance and as much tokens as the uh, hatchers have. And um, yeah. Uh, just to repeat, her, her question was, uh, could you imagine a scenario where uh, people take over, buy a lot of TEC tokens and take over from the hatchers? Well, and um, I, I think that a scenario will be difficult and someone would have to, to to place like three or four times the the um the the money that that hatchers g gave um to to have that that amount of governance and also i w one of the things that i like about a low uh, opening price that uh, most of the proposals have is also that when they then when the bonding curves open hatchers can have like a second hatch, a second opportunity to buy TEC, and we will have it um, from the lowest price. So um, I think that actually the hatcher governance will be, uh, will be always higher than the one that is already minted because hatchers will buy again. And then um, the, people, the, the people that is external to us can um, a, a, a buy it, but um, in, in, a, in a higher price. And, Great. Yeah, I, 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 I have to cut you off right there, though, because we're 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 way over time. Uh, sorry, Wonka. No, it's okay. It was great. Uh, a, a round of applause for Nugget and Wonka. Uh, we forgot to give a round of applause for Nugget. It takes a lot of courage yeah. to come up here and a proposal. So, major props. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and actually, we have Nate. Nate, uh, you know, everyone's talking trash about 420. Uh, it's, you, you're going to need a round of applause early here to represent that one. Do you want to dive into it? <laughs> yes, I do. I will share my screen. Give me one second. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, right. we hear you great. So, 420 is proposal I'll be defending here. Uh, so let's go over each module one by one. We have our token freeze and token thaw parameters. Uh, the 420 uh, token freeze and token thaw is the longest token freeze and token thaw out of all of them. Um, considering the high opening price, uh, this makes sense. Uh, we want to have a longer token freeze and a long token thaw combination. Um, with the price that high, we want to have a gradual release of those tokens. So there's not a lot of not too much cell pressure all at once, causing instability. The longer token freeze offers a, uh, another benefit in that we allow some economic activity to occur on the bonding curve before anybody is able to sell off anything. So um, the, the benefit of that is, is just making sure that the hatchers are vested for a long period of time, that we have enough time for economic activity to occur, and that there's not a lot of sell pressure on it when the tokens do get released. Uh, they're done gradually over a 65-week period. Um, and so it's one of the longest uh, token freeze and token thaws. 
Uh, moving on to the bonding curve. So this is the interesting part where everybody gets excited, but it's also a very strategic bonding curve setup. Um, so we have the opening price of 271. With the uh, initial buy-in, uh, the, the public price with the tribute will be at 472. Um, we have a really low reserve ratio, which means there's going to be a lot of volatility on the bonding curve, bu buys and sells onto the bonding curve. And that's really attractive for a number of reasons, not only for speculation, but also for arbitrage opportunities and the bots. We also have some one of the uh, highest um, uh, tribute percentages. Uh, we, we anticipate this at the beginning, especially during that long freeze period, that this is a good way to make sure that uh, speculators are um, kind of uh, blocked out a little bit. You know, if you're going to be joining and paying a 12% tax, you're going to want to be value aligned. Uh, you you want to be believe in this project. And so I assume that around the, around the end of the token freeze period, we'll lower these entry and exit tributes to encourage that velocity uh, due to the uh, low reserve ratio. And so that'll keep generating funds to the common pool over a long period of time. Um, it has a huge opening market cap, which could have a lot of benefits in terms of uh, perception uh, from the public. Um, so <clears throat> that is a really nice benefit of it. Um, moving on to, okay, so to just to address some of uh, Wonka's concerns, it's it's really about trade-offs. Um, so the 420 proposal makes it nearly impossible for anybody to compete with the, the hatchers in governance. Um, in order to, to match the TEC tokens uh, in governance uh, for the hatchers, it it will take millions and millions of dollars, which means, yes, the hatchers will have much more governance power throughout the lifetime of the, the uh, economy. And I, I don't think that, it, that it's a bad thing inherently. I don't think it locks people out from governance. I think it just protects it for the long-term sustainability of it. As the price gets higher within the bonding curve and the token value gets a lot larger, you're going to have that sell pressure from hatchers. People are going to be tempted to say, hey, if this, if this token's worth $30 or $40, I'm going to sell a couple of them, you know, and so you're going to slowly distribute that that governance power out to the newcomers as time goes on, uh, without risking any type of uh, threat towards the overall governance or overall um, um, power shift within the DAO, and so that keeps it in the hands of the people who are here, who are have a vested interest in seeing this economy work, seeing public foot goods being funded, and uh, so on, and so. Um, one of the big uh, big uh, issues people have is this now. element here, is the amount of uh, TEC tokens that we receive after the initial buy. We, we have a lot less TEC tokens uh, with the initial buy than any other proposal by, by a long shot. Um, but I do think this is a relative because of the, the token price at that time. And so we can adjust accordingly. Um, the Tau voting parameters for this um, I think are really, really nice. Uh, we have 77% uh, support required, minimum quorum of 7%. Takes about six days total to execute a vote without the extension and nine days with the extension. Um, so I, I really like the short three-day uh, delegated voting period. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that giving delegates three days and letting the rest of the community adjust accordingly if they disagree uh, is, a, is a good a good route. With the conviction voting, we also have the highest uh, conviction growth, uh, which in, enables people to move their tokens around a little bit more than forcing them to stake it for a long period of time in order to pass a proposal. Um, you got that and a high spending limit, which allows us to um, spend a little bit more on each of the proposals that are being submitted. And then once again, this uh, in the bonding curve, actually, when we set this up, we'll have a little bit over 900,000 in, uh, in the common pool, which is really nice, 912,000. Uh, so it's not tr not the biggest uh, like downside for that. Uh, the only concern people may have is the reserve ratio, but I think that is a, a, a speculative um, design strategy to generate more funds to the common pool. So uh, I think that is about it in my defense of 420. Great work. Uh, 10 seconds left that I'll just carry over to the debate period. So does anyone have any questions for Nate on 420? Yeah, I, 
I have a question. Um, I was thinking about this. Like, what would you think about the statement that 420 might be the least likely prone to technocracy because the automated bonding curve might may not be permanent, and therefore, with the 77 percent tau voting, there has an easier likelihood that you could pass a proposal to say expand the token amounts. And then you know do something different like put them on a gnosis auction or whatever. But that 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 towel voting is sort of the buffer against technocracy. I just want to hear your thoughts on that. Thank you. Um, I think technocracy is kind of a loaded term. I think that you know if if you have a group of a community like are all the hatchers, if we make a decision, is it considered technocratic? Uh, I I don't think so. Like I, I think that when you limit the amount of decision, the decision space to a small group of people who have special skills in certain areas, and they're the only ones making decisions, I think that it constitutes a technocratic decision-making system. Um, the TAL voting here, I think, is really positive. I think it, it, it has a low support required, a little bit lower minimum quorum. But, I mean, yeah, I think that if anybody... The thing about the Tau voting is that when you we change something to the DAO, this is a big change. This is something serious. And so you need to have some form of consensus. And so if there's a, anybody who uh, disagrees with it, we're more likely going to, you know, uh, pass it. And so that does pose a couple of problems, but I, I don't see that as being a big of a deal since we have the governance being held by the majority of the hatchers. I'm not sure if I answered your question. I wasn't sure exactly the details of your answer, your question, but hopefully I answered something of it. Yeah, no, that's good. No, I was just thinking, like, for example, like the 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 towel voting could say we want to expand the token pool. It's not just that the ABC is the only way that tokens could be minted, correct? Uh, the ABC is the only way the tokens can be minted. So the um, towel voting could not could not vote to expand the number well, of tokens. No, it it could technically, oh, yeah. but it, while the while the bonding curve is active, that would screw a lot of things up. So it would be pro probably unlikely to do it. It would be a bad idea, is what uh, is what Brett and Sam, uh, who audited the bonding curve, have said. But we might turn off the bonding curve, and then we could mint tokens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, I have a question. And you were saying, like, uh, with the tribute, like the intention is like to call people who is value aligned. But the thing is, like, when these value aligned people put 100k into the bonding curve, they only receive seven, uh, 17, almost 18k of TC, which is, in my opinion, very low. What are you, your thoughts on that? That is true. Um, you know, if they're going to put 100,000 and they're wanting to just simply speculate, then this is probably not a good time to put 100,000 in. Um, I think that if you want to support the commons and you want to, um, especially early on in the bonding curve and with such a low reserve ratio, we'll have a lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, volatility with the token. So I think that if you are going to put $100,000 in, you should probably wait unless you are completely value aligned and you want to make sure that 12% goes to the common pool and is funding public goods. I think that is a good way to do it. But uh, if not, I, you know, and then the high exit tribute with the 8%, you know, for us to change this, we have to come together and agree on something. You know, if we want to sell our tokens without that 8% tax, well, we need to say, Hey, uh, let's, let's come to the table and start talking about what we want these entry and exit tributes to end up looking like. Uh, but but I think the 12 and 8% is a really good value to have, especially early on, especially during the token freeze. For that first 39 weeks, we, we'll have kind of a low velocity, but we'll have people who are coming into the TEC, um, contributing to the common pool and being value line. So they'll get in near the bottom of the curve without, uh, without having a lot of speculators uh, ruining things. And what about like the initial buy? Like, there's only going to be like sixty-five k of TC token. Yeah, yeah, that is. 
That is the big thing. But so sixty five thousand is, is significantly less than any other proposal that the the Dow will have control over. But the but it but for me it's relative because the price is at a higher price point, and so we we would just distribute less for the for our working groups for our, our you know bounties and whatnot um so uh to me it's it's all it's all kind of relative uh you, you know you get 164,000 with goldilocks but it's only at a dollar 38 a pop um and so 65,000 at 415 with a higher volatility i i like the that that scenario a lot more One last question for Nate on 420. No? Okay, uh, well then I let's get... Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> uh, what was the reasoning behind the choice on the reserve ratio number? The reserve ratio? Yeah. Like, yes. I, I feel so it's pretty low. Compared to others, yeah, it is very low compared to others, uh, and the reserve ratio is just going to describe basically how volatile the token price is uh, with buys and sells onto the bonding curve. Uh, so we wanted to have a, a high higher price and but still maintain the amount of uh, funds in the common pool at launch. In order to do that, we had to have a lower reserve ratio, and so we have a seventy percent commons tribute, and so that that results in that low ratio the benefit of this is kind of strategic in that you know it, you might have a lot of ups and downs with the price but most of the people that are going to be interacting with the, um, the with the bonding curve in general especially after we place this token on secondary markets is going to be arbitrage opportunities and so it actually encourages more arbitrage opportunities because of the volatility on the bonding curve compared to the price on secondary markets which will generate more funds to the common pool Okay, round of applause for Nate taking on 420. Well done, well done, well done. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and thank you to everyone who's asking questions and participating. It's hard, it's hard in this big group of people to ask questions, but really appreciate it. Uh, and let's pass it over to uh, the Marxist Vlad. Yes, Mitch is here. Uh, Mitch, uh, would you like to present Bolshevik Gambit? I'm going to put six minutes on the clock uh, and and then, you know, ask uh, that you especially highlight the differences between your proposal and other proposals. Uh, sure thing. Thanks, Griff. Um, is this something that I should share screen or are you just going to follow along? Oh, it would be great. I mean, if you could share a screen with the Commons Upgrade voter pamphlet, I, I think that's where things get really magical. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Well, let's have a look here. Um, so sure, we'll start at the top. Um, going from the first module here, we've got the token freeze and token thaw. Um, I believe I have the, the shortest vesting period here. Um, yeah, by, a, by quite a few weeks, by about 14 weeks. And so uh, just talking about that, I really think it's important to note um, two important things when we're talking about vesting. Uh, particularly for the TC. Uh, the first of all is that we've already been investing uh, for what, you know, four or five months now um, since we did the hatch vote. And so, you know, we've already kind of been in that limbo there and I kind of factored it into, you know, my, my best guess for the vest. Um, and after that, uh, we really need to consider the concept of the, the trusted seed and how we have a vetted list of people that we invited to participate in the hatch round. And so I don't think we should add like extraneous uh, restrictions by having long vesting periods. So uh, for that, I have a short token freeze of 12 weeks and then just a one year thaw. And then through that, we could be done and over with the vesting um, in less than a year and a half. And moving on from that, going to the ABC, oops, moved away there. Um, looking at this, I chose a dollar, uh, similar to Goldilocks, you know, comments, tribute, same, similar. Um, and again, that 20%, which seems to be kind of the standard that we started out with in terms of, um, price volatility from the reserve ratio. And, um, 
Oh, the reserve at launch changed. Oh, that's with the um, you added in the, the initial buy there, Griff. Right? This is why this is different. Yeah. Okay. There's the, the the initial and the the if you want to go deep into the initial buy, it's slide twenty one. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. The main thing is that we wanted to get um way over you know that six hundred seven hundred mark that we were seeing earlier on in the proposals, and that we realized that like. 900k you know sometimes a million um will be really good for us because we realize that we want to fund a lot of things so it's really important to have that 900k mark and keeping the reserve at launch relatively low you know only 30 percent going in there will give us a little bit of like price volatility action at the beginning which is fun but then as our DAO matures, we kind of get more into a reserve balance and the token price will stabilize because we've got a good reserve ratio in there. And uh, we've got the $1.47 minting price, the public price attribute, and a good market cap of just over $3 million. Um, so I mean, I see it has a lot of similarities with Goldilocks, you know, kind of like not too hot, not too cold. Um, but I just want to point out a couple of interesting dynamics that come from having these parameters. Um, market cap, I honestly don't have much to say regarding the market caps. Um, but if we move on to the initial buy here, and where's our third one? There it is, right there. Thanks. Uh, into the Tau voting here. Um, 88.8, tried and true for support required and minimum quorum. Um, and the really thing here that I want to point out is that basically these parameters for the Tau voting are all set up so that we could be done over with a vote in one week. So a vote duration of six days and an execution delay of one day. If there's any contention or any kind of like discongruence between uh, delegates and regular voters uh, and there's a flipped vote, we add in a generous three days to the voting time. And really the cool thing here is I want to get into the CV parameters. And so for Two both... Minutes. Yeah. Gambit, we've got uh, seven-day conviction growth. Uh, I think Griff made really excellent arguments for how conviction growth works and just kind of like framing how, you know, things kind of get stale after one month. So realistically, conviction should peak out at that one-month point, so four weeks. Um, minimum conviction four, spending limit 11. And so this is kind of the, the iron curtain. This is the meme that I was selling of the iron curtain for the, the Bolsheviks gambit, where we have... Oh, I see it's divvied up by... Here we go. So this is Bolshevik Gambit data here. And so you can see that it actually takes quite a bit of tokens to get small amounts. You know, where like there one day, eight hours was like impossible. Like if you look on the dashboard here, you guys can see that eight hours is like, forget it. It's not happening. Um, but then if we go to similar proposals, like at the two week, the one month mark, it still takes quite a bit of tokens to get decent sized funding proposals. And, and in the case of like, if it really isn't a good proposal, we always have to remember that we can just challenge this stuff, you know? Like if they're just bad proposals, they're not gonna be able to like run off with the money. There, we have a mechanism in place for DAO voting and conviction voting to challenge this stuff. So, you know, it's good to remember that we do have solid settings that we have time to think about things critically, but we have a backup mechanism that will allow us to challenge things that are malicious in their intentions. Um, and so that's all there in the Iron Curtain. Um, I think it'll be reasonable to expect that we won't really see funding requests coming out of that DAO uh, for under 10K. If we're talking about token engineering and salaries and all that stuff, like realistically, I think we're going to be around the the... Uh, 20 to 50k mark for funding proposals and um, that's pretty much all the modules that I wanted to cover um, for the Bolsheviks Gambit well done nice timing uh, would anyone like to ask any questions about Bolsheviks Gambit yes it's the same question I have for everyone why is evaluation not anything other than a dollar Four dollars, twenty dollars, forty dollars. Just trying to understand why we have so many of those. And why? Why the opening price shouldn't be higher than a dollar? Yeah. Ah, well, this is this is the power of communism, you know. Uh, 
So I mean, really, like not creating this crazy, uh, this crazy capitalist sell pressure, you know, of having these like super high token prices that people just want to like come in and you know play the casino and sell out and you know. So I think the temptation is too great to like set this token price to something crazy. And I think you know, you went in with a dollar, the opening price is a dollar. Okay, we did the initial buy. Like okay, you get a little something extra, but that's because you know we're we're doing this little added feature of the the initial buy-in. Does that answer your question, Durgadas? Yeah, just. I want to make it more community not, focused and not capitalist focused. Seems like we're not valuing the people. You know. <laughs> Valuating the people. <laughs> the, yeah, I mean, here we are. You know, the proletariat doing all this work, and and our, our work's not valued. You're saying that you think that people should uh, that the opening price should be higher. Most definitely. It's it's the single most important factor to me. Mm, I mean, so, I would tend to disagree, yeah. but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure it out, you know. Um, it mm -hmm. seems like, you know, I, I wish I had different price choices. I have to, I basically only have one choice in vote for because mm -hmm. it's the only person who's valued as over a dollar. So I'm trying to figure it out. I'm just wondering why. Mm -hmm. ENS was 50, you know. Um, why aren't we? That's cool. How many people sold their ENS tokens? And I made a bunch of money out of that. So yeah. That was great. So it depends what we're trying to build, huh? Yeah, it's true. Um, and I felt valued by that. Any, any, uh, any more questions? Uh, three minutes, 30 seconds left to talk about Bolshevik uh, Gambit. I have one question. And I remember you, Smith, say like you wanted to move the entry and exit tribute. Could you refresh how was the what's the planning there? Yeah, great point, Zepti. I, I kind of got lost on the on the voters pamphlet there. But if we go back to our augmented bonding curve, um, we have the eight percent entry and the exit uh, ten percent. So I would like to just point out that these will be set up for the first three months of the ABC being open. You know, capture the hype of people jumping into this new economy, um, collecting funds that will go back to our common pool. And then after that three month mark, we would hit something that's more reasonable, like two to three percent um, equal entry, as well as the exit tribute. Any more questions for for Bolsheviks Gambit? Well, uh, one thing. Oh, go ahead. No, just <clears throat> just more on the the price, but it's more a focus on the <laughs> your point as to the optimization of the actual pool for the um, value aligned um, token engineering. So, do you think because it's because the entry and exits are are um, percentages, do you think that having a price of a dollar will get you, I mean, more more volume that will make up for the lower price that will then drive more funds into the pool is if you were to start with a higher price because as, as a percentage, you know, a percentage of a, of a higher price will get you more absolute funds in the pool. So I was just curious on your strategy for the perceived demand you expect. I think there's some some like background psychological stuff happening when it you know we see the opening price coming out a dollar and you know after the initial buy it'll be a a dollar forty seven so it like it can be perceived as more appealing to jump into the market at the beginning because it feels like the price is lower so you, of course that's all that's all relative to like the other settings as well and you know how the price volatility will react with the lower uh, reserve balance. But I think in general, keeping it lower will increase the buy pressure at the beginning. So this this proposal is really close to Goldilocks. Uh, is Are there any things that you want to especially point out? So when people have to decide between Bolshevik Gambit and Goldilocks, what they why they should pick Bolshevik Gambit? Uh, the vesting to me seems like the most distinct uh, difference. 
Um, I can say it's about four. What was it? Fourteen weeks shorter. I think I said. And oh, wow. so there's a bit of that, and just to be a little bit more generous with their spending limit and conviction voting, to allow for larger proposals to pass in case we do have like a a large token engineering project that we would like to fund. Fantastic. Well, there's only seven seconds left, so I'll leave it at that. And uh, just one more quick interlude before Lauren takes on Goldilocks. Uh, well, first, round of applause for the Marxist Chad. He did it without memes, which is a hard, hard sell, uh, hard, hard, really tough, because uh, this probably has the best. You guys want memes? memes? Yeah. We, well, there's so <laughs> many. Got the best one there. Look at this, man. Guys, come on. So many wow. good memes, right? Uh, they're making the rest of us feel like capitalist chads. Uh, sure. But uh, so, yeah, round of applause for Mitch. Uh, thank you so much, the Marxist Vlad himself, coming through. Uh, and I want to just uh, really encourage everyone to. We have a few open, uh, adjustable dates. You know, everyone's all over the world with busy schedules. Uh, in the Params channel, I just put three doodles out uh, one that is for the final Param debate on Wednesday. And two that are for fireside chats. Uh, one set of fireside chats is really targeted at uh, being finding times that are friendly for Asia and Europe. Uh, and then another one is for Asia and the U.S. Because we really leave out a lot of people who are on the on uh, on that side of the world. So we want to make sure that there are some times that you guys can get more informed about this vote if you uh, want to learn about all of these things. So please go in the doodle. We are going to pick the, the time for the uh, for the next ones by the end of the day today. So mm -hmm. if you care about coming to more of these things, go into the doodle. Tell us when you want your you uh, when you want to sort out something for tomorrow and the next day and uh, and we'll set it up. So there's three doodles. Check them out uh, and you can vote right now. How great is that? OK, so last one is Lauren, Lauren, do you want, are you ready to show off Goldilocks? Yeah. Should I just go? Yeah, go for it. Okay, cool. Goldilocks. So the premise of Goldilocks is really um, to find the right balance in between extremes. Goldilocks is all about like, you know, not too hot, not too cold, but choosing what's just right. So I think this proposal is just right. Um, in module one, the opening price is one dollar, which um, after you know after the initial buy, the price moves up to a dollar and thirty eight cents. So hatchers are still getting like an almost forty percent profit on their initial investment right out the gate. Um, but it has a six month token freeze. Basically, I, I think that this is a good amount of time to have the the vested tokens because it really gives us a chance after the commons upgrade to start moving ahead and funding proposals and actually uh, like building even more credibility that that adds a lot of value to our token. So, but again, it's like kind of like right in the, the mid to low range of total vesting period. So um, with the exception of Bolshevik gambits, the, the second lowest at 78 total weeks, including the token freeze. Um, moving on to the augmented bonding curve. Oh, oops. Um, so Goldilocks opening price of $1 and um, the with with the initial buy, we're, we're ending up with uh, roughly $1 million in the comma pool, similar to most of the proposals. Um, one kind of contentious thing is this, um, the entry tribute being 22%. Um, but something that's important to consider is that the, the, it's really the spread that matters with the entry and exit tributes. It's like the total amount that's being taken off. So Goldilocks is the tribute spread is 24% in comparison to 420, which is 20%, and Bolsheviks Gambit, which is 18%. So it's only a little bit higher. Um, I like the high entry tribute because um, it really actually starts bringing funds into the common pool. Like in the early days, we're not really going to be needing more funds coming into our reserve, but having a way to be generating more funds to the common pool is really important. Um, it's realistically only gonna take like a month or so until uh, pools are being set up on Honeyswap or other exchanges and people aren't even gonna be using the augmented bonding curve at all. So I think it's like when we first launched the augmented bonding curve, it's an opportunity for us to be generating funds. Something else really important to consider is that this 22% entry tribute isn't going to be a huge deterrent to people coming in in the early days because when like, I mean, you can look at t convert.t, commons.org, it's like 
the only way you know what the tributes are is like through this little question mark and it shows like what the entry tribute is and, and you only really see the initial price. So you kind of come here and you're like, okay, cool. I'm putting in one die. Okay, cool. I'm getting 60 TC test TEC tokens. Um, so it's, it's really like people have the option of choosing like what they, how much they're willing to put in, in order to get the TEC tokens. And um, I think like anybody who's keeping up with the TEC and following with the, the params debates and just like this entire conversation um, can understand the justification for the entry to it as being like, in order to fund more token engineer proposals, it's like, we want more funds in the common pool so we can fund more proposals and actually be furthering our mission of advancing token engineering. Um, I think it's also really, really reasonable because I think that people, it, it also is like a, a, a insurance that we're getting more value aligned people coming in um, because like the people who dig deeper are like, oh, I'm actually paying a tribute to the common pool to fund this project that I want so that like their their entire community can succeed and the entire mission can succeed. So I think it like really brings people in who are in line with um, with the TEC. Yeah. So this Two is minutes already left. Cool. I'm going to just like keep burning through. Um, so uh, as the has been mentioned, there's a Goldilocks and Bolsheviks Gambit are pretty similar proposals. One thing that sets them apart is um, Goldilocks has this, okay, they both have a pretty swift vote duration quiet ending period. Goldilocks has a five day vote duration. And if there's a quiet ending um, extension, it's like the, the total period goes to seven days with the, um, execution delay a week and a half or a week a week and half a day with the execution delay but something that i really like is that the delegated voting period overlaps with the quiet, quiet ending period so there's three days delegate voting period three days quiet ending period um and a total five day vote duration i think you can probably see this better here yeah so you can kind of see that the the um the delegated voting period overlaps with the quiet ending period, the quiet ending period here. So that means that if there's contention in the delegates votes, the delegates are able to actually trigger a quiet ending extension, which basically allows more time for people to like check their delegates votes and potentially change them or more people to come into a contentious vote. So I think that this is really good, but still we're getting through, through proposals just over a week. Um, yeah. And I think that uh, the, you know, the support required was lowered a touch to 85%, which again, I think is important. And I think like lowering our support required a little bit is really good because we're getting a bunch of people in after we do the TC. It's not really only going to be the trusted seed. It's going to be people who have liquid tokens who are able to sell them um, whenever they want. Unlike the hatchers still have their tokens vested. So I think having a little bit lower of a support required, but still, you know, only 15% of the votes could, could be saying no. I think that that's um, super nice. So I'll move on to conviction voting. Um, in Conviction voting, uh, something to keep in mind is that four times the conviction growth is like really where uh, you're topping out on like maximum conviction because like the, the conviction, um, the rate of increase decreases over time. I think there's a nice, yeah. You can see that like over time, your conviction grows at a slower rate. So after about a month, you're kind of tapping out on your conviction. I think this is really important because proposals that are there for over a month kind of get stale and like not really relevant to the comments anymore. So it's like after a month, the tokens that are actively voting on it, like won't continue increasing so much conviction that it will actually push it to pass. Like the main difference between Bolshevik's Gambit and Goldilocks is really only this spending limit a little bit lower for Goldilocks. So we still benefit from this like iron curtain at the very beginning. Um, so proposals can't pass within like eight hours and it's pretty tough to pass within one day. But when you look at a week, you're starting to pass like 6%, 7% proposals. And with increasing the common pool, this becomes quite reasonable. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So let's 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 dive into the questions on Goldilocks. Does anyone have any questions about the Goldilocks proposal? I I can start off with one. Uh, one thing I noticed is that it has the highest minting price. To Durgadas's point, it's it's the second highest price, second highest market cap, and the second highest minting price because of the commons, the entry tribute. Uh, it's in the voter pamphlet uh, on the um, the one that has all the bonding curve ones, slide 14. So it has a public, the public opening price is $1.77. So uh, what, do you, what do you think about the, that, opening, that opening price and how 
people will interact with Goldilocks via, you know, um, buying the token and how they'll feel about buying the ent- with paying the entry tribute. Uh, well, I think that, I mean, this is the price that's available to the public, really. So people are coming in and being able to see, oh, I can buy the token for $1.77, which does increase our overall market cap, which makes it have the uh, appearance of uh, an economy that has more value, something you'd want to invest in. But it's still not like so high and overinflated that we like threw our reserve ratio out the window and like made the currency super volatile. But this is like the the disadvantage, I think, with like making the opening price itself very high. When you make the opening price itself very high, then you end up with a reserve ratio that's very low. So then as more tokens are getting minted, um, the the hatchers tokens, like the, the people minting tokens are pushing the price up so quickly that they can't really buy as many tokens that the hatchers are having initially. This is like the main disadvantage of having a low reserve ratio, in my opinion. It makes it really prohibitive to new members coming into the community, buying in and then having like sufficient governance rights. But with the entry tribute, um, it has the valuation at the beginning. So it's actually like having a higher market cap, um, which creates this like uh, this this idea that, the, oh, the TEC already has a $3.5 million market cap right out the gate. Um, and and plus they have a bonding curve, plus like the reserve ratio is 22%, which means, the, or 20%. So the token's not too volatile and there's some collateral backing it, there's stability. I think it's like really, really good token engineering and also takes advantage of this like uh, us valuing ourselves concept. Uh, thanks for pointing that out because those are things I did not quite realize about the um, when you say high, I mean, I'm, you know, I just don't think 10 is that high, but, you know, <laughs> everyone has decided that like one is what we're doing and there are no so choices other than the four. So, you know, um, <clears throat> so I was just trying to understand why is that? And what I was hearing was. Sorry. Go ahead, dear guys. Oh, uh, I'm just hearing Mertz. Um, okay, so yeah, I was just thinking that, oh, great, we're going to basically we're coining a shit coin and everyone's going to be taking a dollar. It's worthless and it's a red flag for investors. And why would I want to? There's a million coins that you could buy for a dollar. So it's not that, you know, so that was my concern was I heard a bunch of that and that just stuck with me more than any other single thing that came out of the parameters debates was that if we don't value ourselves uh, more than a dollar, people aren't going to buy the token in the secondary market. And that was a concern that I was worried about. But I see that that is obviated somewhat by um, the reserve, being able to pad the reserve. So I appreciated uh, Lauren's reminder about that. So thanks so much. Maybe I can feel less uh, worried about it now. Nice. And I saw Jeff unmuted. Uh, did you have a question, Jeff? Yeah, I, I also had a question um, primarily about the um, entry and exit tribute. And this came up, actually, I think I was reading through one of the other um, proposals. I forget which one at this point. Um, but someone raised a good point that how, how difficult do we think it's going to be to change the entry and exit tribute. I know, I think Goldilocks had sort of a 4% per a certain period that we were thinking we would uh, kind of reverse the entry and exit to be rather than 22 and two, I think it would end up somewhere like, um, I don't remember the numbers exactly. Was it like 10 and um, 12 or something like that? But I'm curious, cause I saw in that other um, post that all of those votes would have to go through and would those votes have to go through with Tau voting at like 90%? Um, and I'm curious, the sort of um, interest in token holders, as the point made in the post, in increasing the tax on their own holdings. Are, do we feel there is interest in the TEC to change these um, taxes and, uh, sorry, the, the tribute, entry and exit tribute? And also, if we do, is it at the 90% um, quorum that we need to uh, have everyone agree? Or are we going to phrase it? Uh, sort of the other way and say, hey, this is the plan. We are going to change these 4% every six months or so. And then the vote has to uh, go to change that. So I'm just curious with this 90% quorum um, and the uh, entry and exit tributes uh, quite high, do we feel there's an appetite for changing those? And if so, will that be possible or will that be really difficult? Yeah, totally. So um, 
actually the I mean for the Dow voting params for for Goldilocks, the quorum's ten percent. So that's like ten percent of all of the tokens need to be voting on that proposal in order for it to pass. Or uh, sorry, need to be voting yes on that proposal in order for it to pass. And then eighty five percent of all the tokens who voted on that proposal uh, need to vote yes. Yeah. So it's it's not quite ninety percent. Like and one thing one idea with Goldilocks was to lower the su support required a, a little bit um, in comparison to the hatch DAO where we have it 88% because we want to be able to pass these DAO votes in order to change the entry and exit tributes. Um, but yeah, so the the philosophy with Goldilocks is to have uh, every month to be voting to decrease the entry tribute by four and increase the exit tribute by two. I highlighted the part in here. Uh, so eventually, after uh, five months, you have an entry tribute of 2% and an exit tribute of 12%. Um, that being said, a DAO, a DAO vote would need to be passed every month in order for that to actually happen. So it's like we can't like set it up beforehand where it's like we've set it up for every month that happens. It's like I think a DAO vote has to pass in order for us to change the parameters every time. Um, so, yeah, so it's something that we would need to have like community agreement on. Um, and I think that this is like, Something that would be also interesting that would come up into governance discussions later is like the, the you know, the main uh, contentious point about Goldilocks is the high entry tribute. And then the, the people are probably going to want to be lowering. I don't think we're going to have a huge problem of, of lowering the entry tribute um, and get a vote to pass with that, especially with new people coming in. So I, I don't I, I wouldn't say that for sure we'll follow this flow that every month a vote will pass and that this will happen. But it is the the, the philosophy and that like if the community decides that these tributes are too high and that we don't like it, we don't like the taste of that. It's relatively easier to pass DAO votes like the DAO votes we have for Goldilocks are, you know, they're done in a, a week and a half if it's contentious. They're done in five days if it's not contentious. So I think that this is really an opportunity as a community to have like governance discussions and further the conversation of entry and exit tributes. and. Um, it's all sort of built into the proposal as making that possible. Yeah. Well, we're out of time. That was fantastic. Uh, that was a fantastic presentation of Goldilocks. Let's give Lauren a round of applause. Well done. Well done. Uh, woo. Woo. So, uh, and, and with that, I just want to pass it to the people who didn't present and didn't have much chance to talk to here if they had any favorites or things that they thought were interesting. We have only seven minutes, so I'm just going to pass it around and put a 30 second timer for everybody. Uh, and maybe I'll actually start with Jeff since you already got your uh, camera up. Did you have anything that caught your eye? Any where you were started as undecided? Did you have one uh, that especially sounded interesting? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, a lot of the sort of area that I've been looking into lately is, um, you know, around the interaction between a primary market bonding curve like the ABC and secondary market bonding curves, which we've talked about, you know, that would be set up on uh, Uniswap, SushiSwap, uh, HoneySwap, you know, whatever uh, chains that end up getting launched on. So I'm, I'm really curious, I guess one of the kind of bigger areas that I'm looking uh, to evaluate these proposals is the tribute spread. Because the wider the spread, the wider the kind of envelope we have between the buy and the sell that the secondary market can have a lot of action. Um, and I'm, you know, just from what I've seen on some protocols that if there's a large wedge, a lot like a, a big difference between um, the buy and the sell, in other words, the, the percentage, uh, the tribute spread, I guess, um, there's a lot of play for the secondary market to increase and decrease in price without any action on the uh, on the primary market. Um, so that's, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll allow other people to uh, to voice their thoughts, but that's kind of one of the areas that I'm looking at um, with with a lot of kind of um, interest. And, and uh, yeah, I'll be thinking a bit more about that, about how large tribute spread versus small tribute spread and how that may play into uh, more continuous funding for the ABC with a smaller spread. So that's kind of where I'm I'm focusing a lot of my attention at the moment. Nice. That's super cool. Uh, well, I'll pass it to Ann Brody. Uh, did you have, you were undecided as well. Did you have a uh, one that stood out? Um, I'm going to pass for now. If that's okay. Yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, how about Boogie? Boogie, uh, are you there? Do you have any thoughts or anything that stood out for you? No, thanks. I'm just listening, guys. I'm really interested in the project and want to know more about it well thank you for coming absolutely 
How about you, Crypto Muppet? Uh, do you have any any ideas, Frederick, that that you want to share? Well, I was kind of curious about the the price, and I think Dugget has brought that up. That uh, you know, there's not that many options outside of the I think the, the 420 for the high price if you're looking. But at the same time, it touches to the reserve parameter, and I'm kind of trying to come to term with that and and trying to figure out where it sits. So I, I guess it's a matter of stability, right? You want to make sure that you have a high reserve, but but it also feels like it's cheapening out the not cheapening out the project, but trying to tack it to the one dollar price tag, I feel. So still trying to wrap my head around that. Nice. Uh, and uh, Danny, uh, did you were you swayed by any of these uh, proposals or any concepts that you want oh to? Oh my bring god, up? I was swayed by I was swayed by everybody. And I started out like going, yeah, this Oster's baby, that's it. And then I'm like, wow, Nate Suit made some great points. And by the end, I'm like, yeah, I really love what Lauren's saying about building in governance participation, like that, like having a strategy in place to really encourage people to, to, to look and see what's happening and then vote on a monthly basis in place to make those changes. I, I'm undecided right now. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed hearing the differences in the pitch. I'm looking forward to the next one to help me make my decision. Nice. Well, don't be afraid to vote in that those doodles. Just tell us when the next one is best for you. Uh, yeah, and I'm what about? <laughs> thanks, Danny. What about you, uh, Marco? Decentralized SDGs. Do you have a? Uh, oops. Yeah, I mean, I of course I was. I mean, I'm trying to really think how do you optimize the the commons pool because I guess my bias is that I think the governance is somewhat secondary because I think. I just feel there's an overemphasis because if you look at how many people are actually voting, it's not the whole community anyway. Although I and I do think there is a potential if it becomes this technocracy that when you close the bonding curve, you could always have no, another mechanism through the tile voting where they could expand the token pool and do it through another mechanism like on an auction to widen the governance if that was an issue. And I but so I, I just find the attractiveness of of higher price and percentages having the potential to uh, in a, to actually attract people that will then actually bring in very nice, large funding for the commons pool. I also do think that as the price goes up, volatility has the psychological effect of the price will go up in large, quick amounts, which could actually dr drive more demand. And then I think that actually will then bring in further funding for the commons pool. So, but of course, um, I, I loved all the proposals. I think it's been a well thought out. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, Decentralized. Uh, what about uh, Grail? Did you have anything to add? Uh, thanks. Mic check. You can hear me? Yeah. Cool. Um, well, this is, this is my first time getting into stuff, so I, I don't know if I can say much. But uh, like when I think about... Um, as a first DAO that's oriented towards token, um, I like uh, the idea of technocracy, where everybody's kind of doing technical engineering sort of work. Um, I, I found I found that a bit of an comment, and like uh, um, technocrats inside of the hatchers, is outside in the general market. Um, I, yeah, I guess who knows, right? Um, but I do like the idea of a high entry price because if you're getting in, then you're getting in and working, um, and it's going towards projects, and you know it's going towards projects. That, I think that's my uh, main comment. Nice, thanks, Rael. And Durgadas, did you have a quick? Uh, we're we're over time, so uh, just keep it to thirty seconds for sure. Do Do you have a favorite one? I I think I know. Oh, Durgadas, we can't hear you, although you unmuted. Oh, sorry. Uh, I still wish I had a diversity of pricing options among the 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 ones, but I I kind of appreciate uh, you know what Lauren was saying, and I'm maybe less worried about it now. Even so, I still think uh, four is a pretty low uh, valuation in terms of uh, things, you know. So I, I I wish some you know I love all the different things about each and every one of the the options but i just wish there was some price diversion uh 
uh, deviations that I could vote on too. So thanks. Nice. Thanks, Durgadas. Uh, how about you, Ivy? Did you were you swayed by any of these proposals? Is anyone is any one of them uh, something that you want to highlight? Um, well, the docs is still my favorite, but um, I wasn't paying attention to uh, Ostrom's uh, 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 baby proposal before, but um, uh, one guess uh, test uh, caught my interest, so I will be looking more into that. Nice. What about you, Jess? Oh, sorry. Uh, unless you had more to say, Ivy. Yeah, that's all. What, what about you, Jess? Do you have a favorite proposal so far, or is there anything interesting that caught your eye? I joined super late. I'm still trying to read through the proposals to catch up, but I was just like listening for the quick highlights from everybody, so thanks. Nice. How about you, Maria? Do you have any that are, uh, Maff, or do you have any that are coming up for you that you especially like? Um, I really like the the debate on 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 the price <laughs> but i don't have a favorite but but the the, the knowing of establishing a, a, a price is very interesting uh, that's it <laughs> great and pab did you have any reactions here did you have a favorite that stood out or do you have any uh anything else to add uh i think today i learned a lot more about uh Bolsheviks gambit in the 420. And I think I'm looking at it in a way, like taking more into account uh, which of these make us stick like more to the covenant culture wise, I think. I think right now Goldilocks to me feels like the one that creates a community that it's like a lot more aligned uh, yeah, that's how I see it right now. I'm not saying this is final at all. <laughs> yep. But it was uh, awesome. You... Thanks, everyone. Uh, thank you, Pab. What about you, Santi? Uh, did you have any anything to add? Is Did any of the proposals stand out to you? Oh, Santi may be AFK. I'll come back to you, Santi, if you get a chance to unmute. And what uh, we have Sen Ryu. Did you have any anything you wanted to add? Oh, another one having trouble to get that mute button. Uh, if either of you guys just unmute and mute, I'll be watching, and then I'll know you can you can actually talk. Tam, uh, did you have anything to add? You didn't get to uh, any of these proposals, especially stand out to you. Well, I guess I have to say uh, that I thought Nate did a really great job of presenting uh, 420. That was really cool to see. And that, um, yeah, I think it was like it's super interesting to hear all of these. It might be the first time I heard all of them at the same time. Um, I guess the one thing I want to share is like the vesting period, I think, really makes a big difference. And, um, you know, if we look at this like it's a startup, right? Like, a bunch of a bunch of people have gotten together and just pulled together these funds, and you know now we have a now we have now the mission starts right. And the idea is that if you just raise capital and you have twelve weeks or twenty six weeks to accomplish something, it seems unrealistic. I re I really think that like having a long vesting period and a low time preference for the hatchers is um, is strategically wise to to achieve what we're hoping to achieve here. But it was really great to hear. I think everyone really yeah. applauded for not just Nate, but everyone who presented today. That was really exceptional. Nice. And Doga, good to see you here. Uh, Unquail, uh, did you have anything that swayed you especially? <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to see you all again. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to digest all, actually. I kind of uh, behind off agenda. I'm reading the proposals just now sorry for being late but i'm gonna participate after i digest them all <laughs> but thank you for amazing work thanks doga and septimus uh finish us finish us off yeah i mean i really like the bulk of it gambi like hearing it again and again and again and now i start to like it so uh yeah and i really i also wanna uh, like nate did a fantastic job 
least for 20 I really think like you like it uh yeah uh but my favorite like I don't know now I, I'm thinking like Ostrom Polkvit like uh I need another debate I need I need more I need more <laughs> uh, yeah back to you Griff well said well there are more there are more Check out the Parameters channel for Doodles so you can help us pick a time that works for you if you want to come to another debate. Uh, there is one tonight in about seven hours. Zargum's going to be there, so it should be interesting. It's not a classical debate, more of a fireside chat. So we will just discuss the parameters and concepts in a more open format, which should be interesting that I'll be leading. And actually, uh, tomorrow morning for you, so, so the one in seven hours obviously isn't going to work for people in Europe. And uh, you might just be waking up if you're uh, in the Asia time zones. Uh, so feel free to come in. Uh, but if you're in the Europe time zone, the one Septimus is leading tomorrow, I think it's, what time is it, Septimus, for Europe? 2 p.m. 2 p.m. CT. 2 p.m. A fireside chat to discuss more about these parameters, answer questions, and and uh, come with questions, come with things to talk about, and uh, and there'll be more open space. And then our final, our uh, we'll try to do one more fireside chat in both of those time zones that are friendly for both of those time zones, and we'll also have the final debate on Wednesday. So make sure to rock the vote. There's three votes out there, uh, but for sure hit the runoff one. And the other two are, are also pretty interesting, but they're more about the details. So thank you everyone for coming. Sorry for going seven minutes over a lot to talk about. And uh, we will, uh, hopefully it was entertaining and educational and I'll see you in the next ones.